most and what I love and have the most fun is at the classic car event. So here I am at the Rod Run in Pigeon Forge. This, I'm going walking through the outside. Now we've got vendors, beautiful, amazing custom cars on the inside. So there will be interviews, some individual interviews, some as part of this footage. But let me show you exactly what happens here. Take you guys for a walk here at the Leconte Centre and show you what happens at the Rod Run. Somehow she made it through the storm But now look at her She's breaking down the doors It's kind and she is smart The spirit's freed in every way Learning lessons of the life She is never far behind For the All right, everybody, how could this setup not draw me? Check this out. Wow. Skyliner, this is absolutely beautiful. And of course, it's going to draw the crowds with the setup that they've got going on. So it looks like a 1959. Wow. This is beautiful. Let's see if we can get a little bit more info on this. Let me show you guys the interiors. Never seen a Skyliner done to this level. All right, everybody. So I found the owner of this beautiful 59 Skyliner. Bob, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Come here, sir. Stand right in front of your beautiful classic. Okay. This is, I'm loving the colors. And like I said to you, I've never seen one done to this level. Okay. How long have you had it for? I bought it in 1966. Okay. It's, a, it's the first car I ever bought. I really know how to pick them. I yes, absolutely you do. love that. Yes, you do. <laughs> there is a lot of beautiful cars here at the Pigeon Forge Rod Run, everyone. That's where we're at. But you've had this since 1966. Six. My wife and I dated in this car before we got married. I'm telling you, the car speak to me. You guys know that's why I'm smiling so much because I absolutely love the stories behind it. Take us back to 1966 when you first got this. I bought it as a friend of mine was a car dealer and he just told me one day, he said, Bob, I've got a car you need to buy. So I looked at it and I bought it, gave $900 for it. How much did you give? $900. $900, okay. Right, I had to borrow the money. My mother had to sign for me because I didn't have any credit. So that's where it all started. Wow, oh my goodness. And you've kept this really well, but obviously it has now been restored. It has been restored. We kept it all these years, uh, but we didn't have any place to store it inside, so it just deteriorated. Okay. It kind of rotted away, really. Oh, really? And in 2011, uh, we started a restoration. It took seven years and brought it back to life. Okay, well, talk to me about the 59 Skyliner and tell us some of the originals of the car for example what engine did it come with okay this engine originally the car originally had a 332 this is a 302 it's a later model uh upgraded engine because we drive the car so i wanted something more modern yep you know it was a little more, more reliable yep. yes uh -huh. okay wow but all the rest of the car all the trim, all the wheels, tires, hubcaps, everything is original. Everything is original? Yeah, it's all built back to original. Wow. And what was it about this that made your friend think of you and say, you need to get this? It was 
20 years old, single, and having a good time. He, <laughs> he thought I needed a convertible, I guess. Well, you did because you got this and then you got Fonda. Yeah, I got her with it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is beautiful, Bob. Check this out. So the dash, I'm guessing this is what original would have looked like? That's exactly what it looked like in 1959. That's right. Wow. I love this. It's such, it's a big car, but it is so beautiful. And of course, this setup, like I said, what you've got here, is definitely going to draw the crowds. Yes, it does. We, we enjoy it. We have so much fun because people, a lot of people have never seen a car like this. So they're just like, they're in awe. Yeah. You know, so that's the fun part of it, showing the car. Absolutely. And earlier, before I turned the camera on, I asked Bob, what is this? I thought it might have been the Esky, but this is the actual trunk. That's the actual trunk. That's the part of the trunk that you can use. Correct. So when the um, roof is down, if you just need to open up the trunk, that's what you will see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do want to say hi to Fonda, especially okay. the fact that you guys dated in this. <laughs> How are you, ma'am? I'm um, great, thank you. Bob was just telling me that you guys dated in this. Right. You've had this for such a long time. Yes. It doesn't get better than that. When it comes to stories and classic cars, and that's what we I try to hunt on Rana yeah. Slater. This is right here. So you guys drive this? Yes. Yeah. Where does it take you when you're sitting down and cruising down the highway? It's just... We go to car shows. You know, if car shows are like an hour away from our home, we'll drive it. If it's further than that, we trailer it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. especially now after such a beautiful restoration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Where did you guys get this uh, restored at? The people that put it together and did the paint on it is a shop uh, in White Bluff, Tennessee, FST Restoration. Okay. Yeah. They did a great job. And obviously, Tennessee locals, I can see from your shirt. Yeah. Is this the original paint? No, it's not. What was it originally? Originally it was red and white. Okay. Did you see the pictures up there? Oh, let's I can go show you. I can show you what it looked like before we started to restore it. I would love to see that. Congratulations. Thank you. I really know how to pick it when it comes to these cars, everybody. Absolutely love that this couple has had this for such a long time. And look this is, at the pictures. That's the shape. You that weren't it. kidding, Bob. Where did you keep this? Uh, just. Every, anywhere we could, in a barn, under a tree. Uh, oh, wow. It was in really bad shape. So did you do some of the body work yourself? A friend of mine did all the welding and, and cutting welding and metal work. I did all of the small, I did all the, I polished all the stainless. Uh, I've touched every part of the car because we took it off the frame, started completely over with it. Uh, and then different people, like I said, did different things. How did you feel when it was finished? Well, the name of it is Dreamsicle. Dreamsicle, okay. And that came from, my daughter said, well, it looks like a creamsicle, but you have dreamed about this for so long, yep. let's call it a dreamsicle. So that's where the name came from. It was, it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. Yes, I am so happy for you. This is just beautiful. And I would love to see it on the road one day when I'm driving around. I'm in Knoxville as well, so. Oh, okay, you, well, you might see it. I do hope so, but this is beautiful, everybody. 1959 Skyliner, the absolute dreamsicle. Bob, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everyone, this is the outside area of the Rod Run here in Pigeon Forge. A lot of cars to see here as well as the inside. But let's give you a little walk around and see what we can find. They've got a massive car corral sales. So there will be a separate video for all the cars that are for sale and you can have a look there and see if something meets your budget. But for now, we're gonna have a look at the cars here. Loving the two trucks right there, the Ford and Chevy side by side. But I'm gonna stop here at the bus. All right, so I found the Oni here. Barry, how's it going? I good. Hope, hope you're doing well. I'm good. This is so cool. We've got so many people coming around and checking it out. And I've been loving seeing the Volkswagen buses these days. What have you got? It's a 1966 21 wind of VW Buzz. 
German Biota. And the 21 windows, they were very different, they were very rare. Yeah, yeah. me and my wife, we, we searched a long time looking for this thing. We looked up and we found it in a couple of hours from our house in North Carolina, yeah. Okay, and why this? Why did, were you looking so much? I mean, it looks beautiful and I love the fact there are so many windows, it's so airy and it does have the canvas top there. But why for yourself? Why were you looking for so long for this? Uh, we're just car enthusiasts. We've got several collector cars and uh, we just wanted to put this in the collection and, and, uh, and we just, my wife really likes the VW bus, yep. just the nostalgia and the, the sort it. of all appearance of them, yeah. Did you do any work to it? Um, yeah, we put the safari windows in it and uh, there's some ceramic coating and powder coating and stuff, but it was a nice bus when we got it. Okay, these are the safari windows here? Yes, yes. Do they come with stock like this or not? Uh, I'm not sure if you could order them like that or not with them, but uh, it's a cool feature though. It's so different, isn't it? Oh yeah, it sure is. It's a, and it's a lot smaller than some of the other buses. Yeah, the bay window comes out, I think, in 68. This is a 66. 67 was last year, the split window from 1950 to 1967. They built the split window. Of so besides the trim, you didn't do too much else on the interiors because they look like they're Yeah, really the, actually the, the, the gentleman yeah. I bought it from in Oaksboro, North Carolina, he, uh, him and his wife didn't upholster their theirself. Uh, oh, wow. It. Yeah. Look at the interiors here, everybody. This is beautiful. I wish your wife was here as well, so we could have asked yeah, her. Yeah, I wish she was too. She's just over at the island, her and my daughter shopping. So. These are so different, and I'm absolutely loving it, especially these many multiple window ones, because it's just so much air and... Oh, yes, yeah, cool. It, it puts a smile on everybody's face when uh, they, you pull up around the corner and they look, take a look at it, and yep. just, everybody just gets a big smile on their face and gives you a thumbs up. And absolutely. It's just a lot of fun to drive. We really enjoy it. Where, where do you take it? Where, where, where does this take you? Uh, we just go to a few cruise ins around uh, we're, we're North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Okay. We just go to a few cruise ins and that type of thing. And uh, we go as far as an hour away, like the Pilot Mountain. Nice. And uh, it always gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Do you fill it up with kids or grandkids? Yeah, sometimes we put a lot of kids in it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, this is awesome. And how long have you been coming to the Rod Run for? Uh, well, we, we've been going to the Shades of Pass and quit having it, so we, we started coming to the Rod Run last year, and this okay. is the second year here at the Heart Rod Run, so nice. really enjoy it. Uh, well, it's awesome, and glad I got to see your bus. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Who's just oh, dropped in? We've got Nikki and Layla, Barry's family as well. You guys, how do you enjoy the bus? Oh gosh, one of the best things that we love about the bus is like when we take it to a car show, just seeing the smile. When people come up, that's the first thing that we notice, they smile. <laughs> I walked up to your husband and I said, this is just adorable, can I say that? <laughs> and I don't know if I was going to offend him by saying it, but it pulls you in, doesn't it? It does. It pulls you in, I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's, that's our favorite thing about the bus. This is my favorite car we have. What about you, Layla? What do you like about it? I like that it's just, I like it. Oh, it's been on. It looks like the outer one from Outer Banks. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You guys having a good time? Yes, having a great time. Enjoy yourselves. Thank Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks. You know, as someone who does the Chevy shows and the Ford shows, I know the background. I know what goes on. And now you've got two side by side. Let's see if we can get some more information. They look good, but it does surprise me. So let's find out. I love what I do and I love making people do things. <laughs> that we don't like to do. I know, right? Awesome family here. Everybody, introduce yourself first on Rana's Radar. Go ahead, Absolutely. sir. I'm, I'm Richard from Arden, North Carolina. And I'm Heather from Arden also. All right, now Richard and Heather, you've got the Chevy, the Silverado. Absolutely. I'm Carlos from Florida. And I'm Jennifer, all the way from Florida. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Now Jennifer and Richard, okay? So we've got one couple here with a beautiful Ford Ranger, and then we've got the Silverado. And the awesome thing is, sister and brother. That's right. Yep, that's right. Okay. Are you a Chevy guy? I am. Yep. You're a Chevy guy. <laughs> what about yourself, Jennifer? <laughs> I just thought she was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. Absolutely. A Chevy guy, thick and through. you got a sister who's got a Ford next to you. Yep. That's yep. prettier than his Chevy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Uh, you know, I tolerate her, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh. She was broke down on the way here, and we, we weren't. Yep. Oh. <laughs> just saying. 
That's we all see the comments, we all see the jokes, you know, I do the F100 Grand Nationals, but I do the C10 trucks as well, so yes. I love them both, and like Jennifer, I love it because they look good, right. I think the Fords look good, I'm building a Chevy, but the Fords do look good, that's why they I'm do. here. They do. <laughs> you guys, tell me something about your trucks, first of all, who had which one first? Mm, I had mine first, yeah, she actually, we did. saw ours at, um, the turkey rod run not for sale in a back parking lot and i told him that i loved it and he tracked down the owner and convinced him to sell it carlos you're a good man <laughs> are you a ford guy or a chevy guy uh -oh. <laughs> actually i'm uh, neither <laughs> so i <laughs> this is the story of my life okay so I'm, actually, I'm actually a mopar cummins guy so i, I like nice. i like my dodges yeah no, well yep. you know what carlos me and you are exactly in the same box i go. drive a charger <laughs> there you go, there see? You go. Yeah. i got a, I got a d100 funny. at home too so i'm it's... looking for a ford project i'm building a chevy and i drive a charger there you go i fit right into this it's the best Absolutely. Yeah. 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 you get all of it you get a dabble everywhere right? there you go and what was it about this truck that made you think that it's so pretty the color she's beautiful look at her what year is this jennifer it's a 78 but morris is a late 78 so 79 some look right she's got the square headlights that so it makes it it's a late 78 <laughs> 79 so it started with the square headlights instead of the round headlights. so we go back and forth all the time we have a friend of ours who knows a lot about the trucks as well and he's like no it's a 79 i'm like well it's a 78 he's like it's a 79 i'm like well I just like her. That's all. Well, I got a lot of Ford followers on the channel as so well, we'll on Facebook. See. Let us know your thoughts. It is beautiful. Did you guys do any work to it? Lift it, or is God it was okay? already lifted when we got it? Um, We've done some work, so the bed has been um, redone. Okay. Uh, the whole undercarriage was sandblasted and uh, nice. coat, undercoated, um, just to prevent any rust and keep her keep her looking good. Um, what else, man? Just a couple little odds and ends, yeah. but we tried to keep her as original, right? as, original as you yeah. can. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, it looks beautiful. Let's move over to Richard now. Uh, when you did you get to. yours? Oh, that's it. We're done here. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First of all, mate, what is it about the force that you don't like? What is it about the Fords? Well, they tend to break down a lot. So there's uh, that. There's that. That hey, can be ask, a problem. Ask him, who walked out, <laughs> ask him who walked out of there with a bunch of parts earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just grew up with Chevys, I'm guessing. Uh, you know, I mean, mate, yeah. yeah. I guess we had some Chevys, but I've just grown partial to them over the years. Okay. I have. Yeah. And Heather, you must be a Chevy girl as well. Well, I am, but I actually drive a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have I, to, I it. which breaks down. It breaks down, too. <laughs> Can I just good. say, oh, you know, Richard, you've got a tough. You've got a sister yeah. who drives a Ford. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your wife now drives yeah. a Ford as well. Yep. Yep. You're losing this, you know that. Uh, it's a, it's an uphill battle, battle, that's for sure. It's an uphill yeah. battle. But hey, mate, what have you got? What year and how so long it, have you had it for? It's an 85. We've had it for, I guess, close to a year here. The year is what turned me on to it. 85 is the year I was born, so that's I've been chasing one of those for a little while. When we got it, it was all primer gray, and uh, it's come a long way. It's beautiful. i got to say, it's absolutely beautiful. Love it. It's lifted, and we've got kids inside. We do. <laughs> yeah, yep. they're in there yep. somewhere. They're warm and busy. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. You guys having a good time here at the Rod Run? We are. Having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's continue on the Pigeon Forge Rod Run here at the LeConte Center. Gotta love a COVID. I mean, this is just stunning. Absolutely so well done. Aaron, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you again, mate. Good to see you. Congratulations, another brilliant field. Thank you, thank you. Remind us about your shop and where you're located. Uh, just outside of Knoxville in Powell, so about 45 minutes away. This is mm -hmm. our backyard, pretty much. Uh, the Corvette, we just got it done the day before we set it up. So it's literally got 30 minutes on the whole engine. Wow. So no miles on it yet or anything. How many years was this build? Three and a half years total. Three and a half years. And you, and you just finished it literally a few days just ago. Just finished it, got it on the trailer and got it here for the customer to see it. Wow, okay. A very big build. What did you start off with? He dropped it off complete. 
but it had been in his basement for over 20 years, and it was just nasty. Okay. Rat's nest, cobwebs. I mean, it was just, it was terrible. Wow. Terrible. But it was in good shape. It had some damage on the right front from years ago in a parking lot accident. But other than that, the body was nice. It just needed a lot of TLC, a lot of adjustments on the gaps. But it was an original Irma White. Uh, we upgraded a few things on it, but we still we kept it true to what his dad had when his dad got it. Mm -hmm. But we did put the air condition on it, upgraded that, went ahead and upgraded the carburetor on it. So is that the original 327? It is the original 327. Wow. It's matching numbers. It's a four speed, manual brakes, manual steering, so not a lot of thrills, just made to go. But maybe that's what the owner wanted. That's what he wanted. That's it what he is. wanted, isn't it? That's exactly what I he mean, wanted. I mean, I love it because we see so many different restorations and some people want it absolutely modern with all the creature comforts. But then some do just want to feel exactly what it was like to drive a real Correct. muscle. And he wanted it, like I said, like his father had it, because it brings back a lot of memories for him. Okay. So, and it's just like the interior, we redid everything, but the shifter, we didn't re-chrome it, because it was okay. in good shape, so it's a part of his dad's. So every time oh, he I shifts it, it was just like he had it. Just a little sentimental pieces. So he would have remembered sitting in this when he was a young boy. He remembers it, and there's a good story about him borrowing the car, and they they went to Cage Cove, him and his, his wife now, and they were going on a hike. It started a thunder boomer, a big rainstorm came. When they got back to the car, it was flooded inside. He got it home, and so his, his dad, dad sold it. No, at one stage. his dad. He he borrowed it from his dad and took it to the mountains. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he took the Corvette to the he mountains. He took it, and him okay. and his wife now they were dating. Had went on a hike. From what I understand from him, when they came back, there was water in the floorboards, water in the back. And dad's reaction? Dad wasn't happy. He said he made him stay up all night getting the water out of it and drying it out. I don't blame the man. <laughs> oh, but I love that he's now honoring dad's memories and he's redone this. I bet he's not going to get a drop of rain on this now. No, I don't think he will. I got a few sprinkles on it, so it's been baptized a little bit. Nice. Wow. This is beautiful. And I'm loving the paint, honestly. Aaron, where'd you go? Right here. I'm there right you behind are. Him. You're right behind me. Way there. <laughs> I'm loving the paint. And you told me it was the original one where they called it Arctic White? Uh, color code CC, which is Irma White. But Exalted, they call it Arctic White now. Okay. But it's it's not a pure white. It's kind of a off-white eggshell. With but lots and lots of pearl? No, there's actually no pearl. It's just base coat, clear coat. It's not single stage anymore. It's just the clear coat really makes it pop now. This is why I love the Lacan Center because the lights here are amazing. Can I just say they, that? They can make it look good, but they can make it look bad too if you oh, don't really? get it right. Oh, yeah. Because they can bring out some of the flaws? Yes, yes. Well, this is flawless, so well done. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. What about the chassis underneath? Is that all the original ones we've used? Original chassis. Everything is stock. We did go ahead and blacked out everything on the bottom just to make it clear instead of the old factory raw fiberglass. Uh, stock pattern exhaust, but it's using Magnaflow mufflers, so that's been upgraded to give it a little bit more sound. Yep, nice. It came stock with the hubcaps when his dad had it, so we got repops. We kept the originals to hang on the wall and then upgraded to the red line tires because we thought that really set off the white paint instead of using Absolutely. a white wall. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most of the chrome is original. We had it redone in Elizabethan, had it replated. The stainless is original. Emblems, we did change those out because it's just cheaper to buy those. Yep. But we kept the originals so he can make a thing on the wall. If he ever wanted to put put them back, he could. Nice. So he's got all that stuff. Nice. I mean, this, ex this is exactly what classic cars, the sentimental value behind it, this is exactly what it shows. Exactly. I love that. I absolutely love that. Wow. Beautiful. Aaron, what's next for you guys? Uh, we have a 67 Cougar that we're doing in the shop now, and it's been in the family since new. Okay. Uh, we're putting a Coyote motor in it, TCI, torque arm system underneath, but it'll be a complete custom. Okay. So that's the next big one. 
Well, we look forward to seeing it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody, why don't we check out some of the vendors here at the Leconte Centre. Here in front of me, I've got Kirk's Custom Upholstery. Let's have a chat. Todd, how's it going? Doing good, going great, going awesome. You've got two beautiful bellies Thank in you. front of us. The cars have drawn me, but you do interiors. Yes, full custom interiors. Tell us about your shop. Um, my father done this as a business for 40 years prior to me, and um, we've been at it for 25, 30 years, same place. Uh, I do one-off full custom interiors on anything you need. Cars, Love that. trucks. And bikes? I do motorcycle seats too. <laughs> Check this out, everybody. Let's have a look at some of the swatches. Now, you've got some leather here. Yes. Tell us about the leather you use. Um, I use different suppliers. Uh, only the best top-grade leather that we can buy is the only, the, the only thing that I use. Try not to skimp on any kind of quality uh, product or anything. And you do everything. Now, we've got two of your works here, so we'll go and have a look at that as well. But as well as that, you've got that very custom truck green whatever it is yes. i don't know yet because i haven't had my interview but <laughs> the interiors look very sleek thank you let's have a look at the ballet yes. you've got here yes so when it, uh, someone brings their project to you where do you start off from do you use existing frames or do you just start from the ground up i start from the ground up most of these cars are empty when they come to me and i custom build all the door panels consoles head headliners um, full custom seats. Some of them we use the frames, pre-existing. Can we open the door? Yes, sure Have a can. Look. Now I'd like to show you guys the vendor set up here at the Rod Run so you can see and if you need interiors done, have some options, especially if you're in Tennessee. Todd, this is beautiful. So over here, you they gave you the empty shell basically. Yes. And you did everything from the frames, the seats. Yes, full custom build, start from nothing and just make everything happen. Look good and pretty and neat. Wow. Interiors include everything, I'm guessing, from the dash to the headliner, the consoles. Usually the dashes are done, but yes, I do make full custom consoles and headliners. Wow. We know that restorations take many, many years. Yes, they How do. How long do interiors take? Um, usually it takes me somewhere between six and nine weeks to do a full custom, sometimes less, depending on how fancy it is, how much stitching we're doing, or Okay, you know, so if someone's just doing something stock, then it might be less time, Correct. but for custom and picky clients, Correct. it might be a tad longer. Correct. 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 <laughs> well, I love that. How long have you been coming to Pigeon Forge here for the Rod Run? I've been doing this show for about 16 years. 16 years mm -hmm. okay well people to get in contact with you do you have a website i do it's kirkscustom.com and there's facebook and instagram also under the same name awesome love it thank you so much thank you all right everyone i'm having an awesome time look at the cars behind me i'm going to show you more and give you guys more interviews but right here with me joe carpenter so how's it going it's going great the Grand National F100 Nationals is just around the corner. That's right. Less than a month, weekend after Mother's Day. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be here at the Lecon Center, and it's big. I mean, I think it's the biggest F100 show there is. It's the largest classic four-truck show in the world. That's the one. It's so much fun. Indoors and outdoors, it always gets packed. There's the whole takeover tour. The trucks get lined up. There's a cruise happening. 200 swap meet spaces filled with the most valuable rusty gold that any Ford truck person would ever want. Absolutely. The swap meet is huge, and I'm trying to get more involved to show you guys what's there at the shows because these swap meets, I mean, they this is the time they come out. It, it's a, it's out their building, they rely on the truck. swap meets. It's, it's the place that, it's the only place that you can get some parts. Yeah. The show has been going on for so many years, and it has only just grown. It's really grown, it's really become a worldwide event. And, and when I say that, it comes from where the people come from that yep. visit the show. That's Absolutely. Fly -in. That's fly -in. right. Now, I did my blog through it, and there's a lot of videos on the Grand F100 Nationals on my channel. On the channel, I'm going to try and give you guys a description and put the links there. 
I met people from France, Canada, of course, New Zealand, Australia as well. We got people, I've sold spectator tickets to folks from Great Britain, yep. uh, Mexico City, Colombia, Nicaragua, Canada, and, and West Coast states. We got vendors coming from Southern California, Arizona. It's a fun show. The crowd is awesome. Everyone's having just a fabulous time. Outside, inside, there's going to be beautiful trucks. A lot to see. There's a lot to see. And of course, check it out. The base in all its glory is here at the Lecon Center as well. You know, Joe, I told you that this is just beautiful and then you've got so many trophies there. As somebody who gives out trophies yourself at your show, let's move this way a little bit. What do you have? Some tips or advice that you want to give to people out there who are participating at the shows? Well, I'd like to let everybody know that the really most important part of our show, the biggest draw of our show, are the trucks, but it's the folks too. It's the camaraderie, it's the connections people make, and just sharing that familiarity with the same thing, everybody having the same thing in common yeah. at one show is what makes the Grand National F100 show unique. And that's why folks look forward to it and come back every year. A lot of people come there, they don't really come there for the trophies, they come there because it's such an amazing atmosphere for the crowd. It's called a show, but it's really kind of a reunion. Uh, it's a get-together because you're welcome, it doesn't matter what shape your, your truck is in, what condition it's in, because my blue truck, you know, I love the it, it barely ran when I started. But, it took me on the cruise. The, the, the show is where I figured it out. Yep. And that's where you come to figure it out. Yep. Love it. I absolutely love that show, you guys. May 18th, 19th, and 20th? This year, 16th, 17th, and 18th. I'm sorry. The 16th, 17th, and 18th of May. Get registered. Otherwise, just show up here at the Lecon Center in Pigeon Forge. It's going to be fun. I'm going to be here on the Saturday. GNF100show.com. You can register online. There you go. Love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Let's take a look at this. I had no clue what classic it was. It looks beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. There is a lot happening. This nice wide body right at the back there. So we're going to get some more information and see what's going on. All right. Let's have a chat with the owner, Mark. There is a lot here, and I've got no clue what it is. So, Mark, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Come over here, sir. Come okay. next to me in front of your beautiful car. Okay. Now, I love seeing classics, and we love seeing the resto mods and ones that have been restored back to absolutely original conditions right. as well. Right. But you've got something very different. That's right. What have you got? I've got a 70 SS. It's built by Trans Am Worldwide in Tallahassee, Florida, and they take a Camaro and strip it down to the chassis and completely rebuild it. All the body panels are carbon fiber and put a new power plant in it and customize it to your liking. Love it. So you're getting basically a whole brand new car. A brand new old car. A brand like new old car. I love right. that. Now, we, I have seen and we've seen some on the channel as well with the Corvettes. There's a lot right. of um, aftermarket production right. companies out there and they do an outstanding job on making those Corvettes, especially the classic ones, giving it a wider body. Right. Something similar has happened here as well. Yep. I just want to show everyone the full car, the outside, and then we're going to come back here to the engine as well and get a bit more information, but check this out. This is absolutely beautiful. If it doesn't stop you, I don't know what will. I'm liking it. It's full convertible. 1970 SS. Let's start over here. Remind us, Mark, what engine would the 70 have had? This one has a 454 big block with twin turbos. It puts out 1,487 horsepower at the rear wheels with 1,317 foot-pounds of torque. Not something that they would have had in 1970. <laughs> Not hardly. <laughs> what, Not even close. What did it come from the factory? Uh, well, it came from the factory, the, the, the original one. Yeah. The original came, uh, the 454, I think they had like close to 500 horsepower. Okay. So this is triple that. Wow, it's beautiful. Now, you've got a plaque here that says that this is one of 25. Yes, ma'am. They're limited production of the 454 model. 
and uh, this is the first one they first production they built of the 454. Trans Am conversions, where are they located again? Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee in Florida. Okay, I definitely have to check that place out, everyone. But I'm loving the front here. This is very different as well. The chin spoiler, that's not 70. No, no. No. So there's definitely be, a lot has been added here to make this very custom, especially with the front fender as well. The front bumper, I should say. In your opinion, what is the, some of the biggest changes that they made to the 70 SS? Uh, not a lot of changes. They tried to replicate the body style and still make it look modern. But the front end is almost identical, and also the rear end is, is almost identical to the 70, the 70 Chevelle. Okay. I thought that back here was a lot wider. Yeah. Is that the yeah, case? It's, it's six inches wider than six the... Six inches wider. Right, yeah, six inches wider, and it's also 14 inches longer than the original Camaro body that came with the car. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's a lot wider, and you can see that from the back here, and it's longer as well. Beautiful tires right here with the wheels. Nah, this is amazing. So, talk to me, Mark. Come over here. This is full convertible. Yes. You want me to, put the, want me to put the top up? Yeah, I would love to see the top okay. up. Why don't we see the interiors okay. first? Let me open the door here for you. Please. It's got the old retro ha uh, handle, so it looks like the old Chevelle. <laughs> Now, does Trans Am conversions do the interiors? Yes. Everything? Everything. So all the gauges, uh, the gear shifter, the seats are patterned after the 70 Chevelle to give it that retro look. And we've got the horseshoe shifter as well? That's correct. It's still trying to give that vintage vibe? Yes, yes. Yeah. And is that a bit of carbon fiber we see here yeah. at the front? Yeah, carbon okay. fiber steering wheel, right. Very nice. Yet, it's got all the creature comforts of a modern day car. This is beautiful. The undercarriage here, you said they got the Camaro yeah. undercarriage? Yes, it's okay. a Camaro chassis, yes. Camaro chassis, sorry, and they built a Chevelle on top of it. That's correct. My question to you is, why the Chevelle for you? I just I just like the way they look. You know, it gives that old American muscle car. Absolutely. Th this is one of the most popular muscle cars that we ever built was a 70 Chevelle, and it just, this embodies the American muscle car, in my opinion. And they're still very popular. Oh, yes, very popular. And yes. if you've been watching the channel, we've been looking at some of the prices and some that are out there for sale, and they never come down. No, they don't. They don't. They never come down. So this is beautiful. But Thank yeah, you. let's see that top in action. Okay. Nice. It looks more like a Chevelle with the top on. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Absolutely stunning. What are you going to be doing with your new car, Mark? Where are you traveling Drive, with it? Driving it as much as I can. That's the attitude and yeah. that's the answer we were looking for. Yeah. This is stunning. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's continue on. Inside the Lecon Center here, so many beautiful cars. This is absolutely stunning. Let's have a chat with Harold and Steve from Steve Holcomb Pro Custom Interiors. Yes. How's it going? Good going to see good. you again. Good to see you again. Steve's shop is on the channel. I'll put a link so you can have a look and see. Um, there's a shop tour and amazing interiors. I'm not surprised. A lot of high-end builds, very custom builds. The interiors do come from yourself, sir. Well, it, it just seems to be that way. Yeah, I'm tickled and I'm blessed for sure. Well, they're beautiful. The they, work is beautiful. They, Harold, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm from just south of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I built a car for David Walsh. He's in Macon, Georgia. Um, 
he just brought me the car. It was a teal car with a teal interior, just a little Falcon Sprint. Five years ago, it was a five-year build. I had to take a couple years off. I lost my wife to the build. And oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, he just said, do what you want to do to it. And I got some ideas. and Gave you full range. Yeah. We tucked the bumpers. I changed some stainless on it. We lengthened the fenders and the hood an inch. We'll have a look at it in detail. But how? what's the name of your shop? It's a hobby shop at home. I just call myself Hot Rod, Harold's Hot Rod Shop. Harold's it, Hot Rod Shop. It's not a business. I do it just as a hobby. Okay. And um, so we bought a Roush motor with eight stack fuel injection. And I'm friends with Steve Holcomb. He did a Corvette for me seven years ago. And we've become real good friends. And so I got it to a point for the interior and the top. And I dropped it off to Steve. And he did his magic. And... He made my work look good. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us for starters, what year is this Falcon? It's a 63 and a half Falcon Sprint. It's got a custom grill that I had made. Um, a lot of fabrication work come from my buddy Andy Gilhold at Precision Guesswork. He works at home like I do in Hastings, Michigan. Uh, like I say, we lengthened the fenders so the headlights didn't stick all so far because they like kind of, Falcon's got a bug-eyed headlight yep. in them. And uh, we just cleaned the car up. We took some moldings off of it. And it's got a Curry 9-inch Ford rear end with a, a Tremec 5-speed tranny. Made new inner fenders. I'm loving the engine bay. Now, with the Falcons, I'm not familiar. Were they always this deep, or did you make yours well, sit lower? Well, it had shock towers in here, and we took. it's got a TCI chassis under it, so we took all the shock towers off, and so it cleaned the engine bay up that way. And It new, makes it look so much more bigger. It, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and like I say, I, I take a car to Steve, and he knows what I like, and David likes. And, and, we, and that we, always helps, doesn't it, Steve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's good to, to get a relationship with the customers and, and know what type of interior they like and everything. David Walsh has been a, a really good, excellent friend. He's a good customer to work with. Harold's a good customer to work with. So So you all three all, of you are in sync. Yeah, we all work We together. know what each other likes. Yeah. Yep. You know, that so always helps. We've a few cars for Harold and David, and, and uh, so I know what taste that they need, you know, or that they like. Nice. So we did a full custom black leather interior and added a lot of aluminum trim and things like that. Just sort of make it look like an, an original style interior, okay. but more custom. You know? We'll definitely have a look at the interiors. Moving along, the body lines here, Harold, did you change anything besides... No, um, we just lowered it other than, you know, we tightened the bumpers up, yep. you know, they stuck out too far and... I changed the side molding. It was too wide, the original, and I, I had that narrow molding made. Nice. And um, just took the Sprint molding. It said Sprint right here. We took that off, and it was a V8 car. You know, we just, some of the moldings sometimes takes away from the car. So we just. I, I love it because it's a, so much more cleaner clean. look here now. Yeah. Absolutely. Very sleek. Just got go billet for that specialties. Clean. Billet specialty. Yeah, the wheels. Red line tires come from uh, Diamondback tires. Soft flat billet specialty wheels. I Di like that style of wheel. Diamondback tires do awesome work. And I believe they're the only ones where you can get the striped tires from. Yeah, they so, do gold stripes, uh, yep. red stripe, blue. Or blue. blue. <laughs> You'll have to watch the channel to see why I'm mentioning that. <laughs> I'll open the door for you so you can Absolutely. see the interior real good. And, Okay, check this out everybody. I do love Steve's work. I've seen a few of them and it's just so clean, so tight. You know Steve, that's what I always say every time I see your stuff. Absolutely beautiful. Now, you have to guys tell me, is this stock what it would have looked like or you've made well, some customs? That's, that's the original speedometer cluster, but I took it out because it had lights in it instead of gauges. And Classic Instruments custom made that gauge cluster for me. Nice. We put an I did it steering column in it. Uh, like, that's the original front bucket seats, original console. We just kind of cleaned it up, you know, but not too custom. Mm -hmm. It was an automatic car, now it's a stick. 
Um, David likes stick shift cars. And why did David choose to have this car redone? Well, he just wanted to do something different. You know, ain't many Falcons been done. No. Gotta love the trim here. Check this out. It's kind of like your signature look, Steve, would you say, with the trim added inside the interiors? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you can sort of tell the way we've done it, yeah. This is original. This is original. That Steve put these two pieces in. Nice. It just, he sent me a picture of that and I said, that's it, yeah. Wow. But I'm always happier when the car's done because Steve overdoes it, really. <laughs> wow, this is beautiful. And congratulations, you're as part of the yeah. Dirty Dozen as well, selected. Yeah, yeah. I've been here nice. twice. I was here six years ago with a Corvette that Steve done the in. That was okay. the first interior he done for me in the Corvette. Nice. But uh, it done good, and I think the Falcon's nicer than my Corvette. I like Corvettes, but this this is something. This was, It's just different to do. It is different. It's different. It's, it's not as big as some of the other yeah. traditional muscle cars that you would see. Yeah. Yet it's still very sleek. I'm loving it. It's very clean. It's very clean. Look at the hood here, everybody. That's the original hood scoop on the car. Got a newfound respect for the Falcons. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen many of them on the channel. Wow, this is very nice. And I'm loving the studs here. The... Very different. The picture of me in there. Wait a minute, up front. Beautiful. What's next for yourself and your shop? I'm doing a 60 Buick LeSabre right now for David. It's under construction. Okay. Um, I've had it for a few years, and like I say, I'm I'm doing a Corvette for Steve, so I've got two big jobs to do. A, a personal one for yourself? Yeah. yeah. What year? 67. 67 Corvette, yeah. okay. Hopefully that's going to be in the Dirty Dozen next year. Next year, so it'll be finished by next yeah. year. It better, yeah. it better be, it might not do no more interiors for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awesome and congratulations again. Thank you. I look forward to seeing it next year. Thanks. Thank you. Here's a little bit of the inside, the Lecant Center, everyone. Hmm. Oh, I know this couple. Uh, so this man. <laughs> I had to get this truck back in here, but more importantly than the truck, but Karen <laughs> here and Joe as well. So good to see you two. Thank you. We met two years ago. Yes. In Scottsdale, Arizona. Right. And this drew me absolutely beautiful. But more than this, now, Karen, you did some singing back in the day. Oh, you have such a good memory. I try. Now, <laughs> facts and stuff, I can remember. Names I do forget, but I remembered yours. Tell us again, remind us, what did you do? Uh, with the singing? Yes. Oh my gosh, since I was 11 years old, I, uh, I started singing professionally in uh, musicals in San Diego. And then all my life, through junior high, high school, college, I had bands. And then I started traveling all around the United States. And in 1969, I did a USO tour. Love to that. Southeast Asia, yeah. I love your accent. You know, it reminds me of Dolly Parton, your voice. Oh, really? It does. Oh, my gosh. It does. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. So I can see that. And then you've got the beautiful truck as well. What have you got here? Remind us. Oh, my gosh. This is a 1938 International Harvester. My childhood dream was to have an old truck. And so Joe and I bought it seven years ago. And it was not as pretty as it is now. Joe's done everything. He did the wooden bed. He did the railing. He did the... Um, Not a lot we, of kids would be dreaming of having an old truck. You know that. Yes, I know. That's so true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. But you can see the picture on the board that I have, Raina, that um, what, what it looked like 
when we met the gentleman and I said he was putting it on the auction block the next day in, um, in Oregon, and I sat in it and I said, you cannot put this on the auction block. Look at your smile there, everybody. I, was, I told him, I said, I'm not getting out of the truck until you <laughs> sell it to me. And so that was in 2017. Wow, 2017, it's beautiful. Thank you. And I, I'm so happy that I was able to see it again here under the lights. You just reminded me, the way you're walking now, yep. you asked something ask? about the tire when in Scottsdale, about the tires, and I said, we have to get Joe, and I can't remember what it was. I remember that as well. You do. I, I don't know what question it was, but I remember I said, um, I asked you some question, probably like, what size is that, or what's the engine? You said, well, I have to get Joe for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I love the fact you have this truck and you're Thank here you. all the way to the rod run. How many miles did you drive Two, in this? 2,000. 2,000 miles, everyone. Joe, Look at that. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we trailered the truck okay. in an enclosed Jim Globe uh, trailer nice. and uh, we uh, Joe drove the uh, RV. Yeah. But 2,000 2, miles. miles. And it's the rod run. What is it about this that you have enjoyed so much so far? Oh, I'm going to tell you, first of all, the people here in Tennessee are wonderful. They're so approachable yep. and kind. And uh, this facility is so well staffed. Everybody's friendly and helpful. And all the owners of the cars are approachable. And we we respect each other for Absolutely. the work that we put into our vehicles and how much we love it, you know. And everybody's in the same mindset. Absolutely. This uh, Le Con Center is one of my favorite places. Tennessee is the best state. I mean, that's why I'm here. Oh, <laughs> I've chosen to live here, so I completely understand what you're saying. But you have had such a blast here, and you've got heard a very touching story. I did. And I'm hoping that you can share it with our viewers on what happened a little earlier? I'll be happy, happy to do this. <laughs> it's so special. So um, I was standing by the truck and I saw a gentleman come up and we engaged a conversation. And to me, he looked like he may have been a farmer. And I mentioned something about, oh, you must have farmland or acreage or something. <laughs> and do you live here? And he said, no, I'm from Connecticut. And I said, did you come here for the show? And he said, I do come for the show but I came for something very special. And I said, what was that? And he said, I met my two brothers for the first time wow. this morning. And I said, did you do a genealogy something? And he said, no. He said, I read my father's obituary. And I, it, the, it said that, I, that he had three sons. And uh, I got goosebumps again. And he said, um, so my daughter went on Facebook and researched and found one of my brothers here wow. in Tennessee. And she reached out to him and, and said... And he had no idea that he had two brothers No, at up. all. And this is an older gentleman as well. Yes. Wow. Right. And so she reached out to the brother that she thought was the brother and said, um, I believe that my dad is your brother. And she sent him the obituary I believe and then he said I think you're right wow and so he came here and he had just met his brothers and they rendezvoused at the car show right here near you and of course in true Karen style you have to take a picture <laughs> of course I did <laughs> but how could you not I mean this is the stuff I told you you see uh, in movies it's just so touching uh, it is it's so heartwarming and so they he I said well he I said where are your brothers and he said they're around here and and I said, will you bring them back and let's take some pictures. You could only imagine the entire family reunion that would have happened with their families meeting each other and saying, wow, right. you've got a long lost uncle, you know. Exactly. Wow. Oh, it was, it, it just touched me. Like I've, I've been ta telling everybody, running around, telling everybody my, <laughs> my experience. I'm so glad I ran into you again, me honestly. Too. It's such a oh, pleasure to see thank you. Thank you. I've thought you about contacting you and, and it's, I, I well, just, probably at the wonderful. time, I didn't have a card. Who knows? I probably didn't have a card because I had just started. It was a good two years oh ago. Oh, gosh. And um, I didn't, but I will give you my card now. Oh, thank you. And it's so good to see you, thank Karen. You. And I know you have a good time in this. <laughs> yes. yes. Look at this, everyone. I'm going to put a link here. I'm going to go back and try to find the video where I first met Karen so you guys can see our first introduction and then there's more details on the 
truck as well. That'll be on the top right hand corner, but such a pleasure, hon. Thank you. So good Thank to see you. you again. You too. All right, everybody, I absolutely love walking around here at the Le Con Center, checking out the vendors for you guys, as well as the awesome, beautiful custom classics here. But I have run into a couple of friends. We've got Mike yes. and Sherry Blackburn. Yes. I'm going to get them to introduce themselves and then tell you about an awesome show that is happening here in Pigeon Forge. How's it going, you two? It's going great. Um, we barely had a lot of response this year. Um, we have right now about 140 cars that we're going to have inside this year. Okay, well, tell everybody what show are we talking about? It's the Pontiacs and Pigeon Forge. Pontiacs take over Pigeon Forge, everybody. I'm going to put a link. I was here briefly last year, and even in my short visit, I absolutely loved it. And there's a little video on it, so you guys have to check it out and get yourselves registered. Now, the show is awesome. We get to see some amazing cars, but I love what the show represents. And tell us a little bit about who's in memory of whose it is. Uh, the show actually is put on in honor of our daughter, Sierra Blackburn. Uh, she passed away in 2015 um, at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. So we have actually been giving back to St. Jude each year. So the proceeds that the show brings in each year, we send to St. Jude after the show. So we work all year just to put on a non-profit for St. Jude. I love that and that's what I heard. Everybody speaks very highly of yourselves and of the show as well because all, pretty much 100% of all proceeds go back to St. Jude. Yes. And Sherry, this is always a difficult time of the year for you but it's remembering Sierra and there is even a Sierra Award as well. Yes, yes there's yes. a Sierra Award. And that's the best in show, but more than just that, it's actually given, who was giving away that award? Her brother. Her brother. Yes. Because he would know what she would have liked, right. what her taste would have yes. been. It's not about... I um, put his taste in there too. There for you sure. go, for sure. It's not about just having a lot of trophies and different awards, but about raising money for a good cause. Yes. Yes, and giving back the same year. And giving back. And every year it has grown so much. Yes. How many years has it been going on for? This will be their 24th year. 24th year. Yes. Pontiacs take over Pigeon Forge, everybody. Tell us the date, sir. It is uh, May, 30th. May 30th through June 1st. Okay, and for people who have not registered, where can they get registered? Uh, at uh, PontiacsandPigeonForge.com. Mm -hmm. uh, just go to the registration tab and register, or you can reach us directly on Facebook under Pontiacs and Pigeon Forge. Otherwise, just show up here as well because yes. there is parking outside. But if you want to be inside the awesome Lecon Center, one of my favorite centers, check around behind me. See those lights? They make everything shine. They do. <laughs> so get over there, register, and I will be here as well um, to give you footage and coverage and awesome interviews. But you too, this is awesome, and hopefully we'll see you in a few months. Thank Good, thank you. Thank you. This is beautiful. All right, 55, yep. 55, I don't know if it's a 210 or a 150, but I'll have to ask. Wow, that is pretty neat. There you go. Very nice. Hi there, how's it going? You look familiar. I had a copper color, uh, 44. Okay. My wife talked to you. I'm camera guy. Oh, your camera. Well, you're on camera now. <laughs> Cheers. Football. Football. <laughs> so whose beautiful 55 is this? You just left. He'll be right back. Yeah. I'm talking to the wrong people. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely stunning. Was this at the Tri-5 Nationals? It was not. It was not. Okay. Okay. It's beautiful. 210 or 150? You don't know? Don't give me line, dude. My mind's just gone oh, blank. Two ten or five. Well, two ten or five, but a hundred fifty five. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 
I love coming to the car shows, everybody. I do have the most fun here. But this is beautiful. The owner's not here, but it's still awesome. Try Five Nationals is not far. Bowling Green, Kentucky, there is footage there. I will put a link so you can check out what I was up to last year. That's a nice Impala, everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so the Impala definitely drew me, everybody. Now I've got the owner here. Gene, how's it going? Good. Like I said, absolutely stunning. What year is it? It's a 1960 Impala. 1960. And it's the two-door hardtop as well. It's been done so well. Is this a full frame off restoration? Yes, ma'am, a full frame off restoration. It's got a 2006 Z71 5.3 motor in it. Nice. Uh, got it chromed out under the hood. Just real good gas mileage, fuel mileage. Before the restoration, what was the condition of the Impala? How bad was it? Diamond in a roof. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So the body was okay, wasn't too bad? Not it wasn't too rust. bad. Okay. It's Wow, now the interiors have been really done up as well. It's been redone too, yes ma'am. Let's go and ha show everyone the interiors here. <laughs> the Impalas are very popular these days. Now there are so many beautiful classics, Gene. Why the Impala for you? I love Impalas. Why? <laughs> I don't know, I got three or four of them, but not all 60s. I got a 64, 63, uh, 61, and a 60. Okay, so you're an Impala guy. I'm an Impala Fair guy. Fair to say. Now, did you do a lot of the restoration here yourself? No paint and body work. I did everything else. You actually did the interiors as well? No, I didn't, no interior or no paint and body. Okay. Or the chrome work, I done all installed it myself. Nice, nice. Had all the aluminum chrome and all the stainless polish. You've done that all yourself. And I what put do you all do? The window stuff in myself. What do you do on the daily? Split brick for floor tile. <laughs> okay, it's very far. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do mechanic work when I was a kid coming up. Okay. And I had my own shop for a long time. But you love this and you get your hands in it, so it's definitely respected right there and it's a beautiful car. Thank you. You come here to the road run often? No ma'am, not all the time. Okay. But we drove it up yesterday. And where did you drive from? Loosedale, Mississippi about 550 uh, miles. I was just going to say, that's a fair way. And you drove in the Impala? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Running, driving, classic. That's what we like to see. we got 20,000 miles on since we built it. Wow. Enjoy it. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, too. You All right. Always fun talking to groups and seeing stories and meeting people, everybody. But let's continue on. See what else we've got here. I have to go check out the Coke van, the Coca-Cola van. There's a Ford van here. You need to take a video of my car. I need to take a video of your car, so where is your car? I'll show you where it is. Hi right, everybody, check out Larry's Challenger GT. Very nice. Larry, congratulations, you've got some trophies here. Yep, the best Mopar and the best Mopar. Very nice. And what is it about the Mopars that you like so much? The power. The power. And what engine have you got here? This is a tiny uh, well, V6 because it's all wood drive, but it can do a 10.1 in an 8 mile. Okay. Check this out, everybody. Beautiful. You having a good time at the Rod Run? Yes, I am. Well, enjoy yourself. Thank enjoy you. your ride. Thank you.